The Economy of the Mali Empire, Part 2 And so, the decline of the Ghana Empire provided the growing Mali Empire with an opportunity to take over not only their territory, but also their influence over the Trans-Saharan trade routes. The Mali Empire and the Trans-Saharan trade routes The African cities that formed part of the Trans-Saharan trade routes which the Mali Empire was so heavily involved with included Dijane, Timbuktu, Kumbi Saleh, Gao, Takeda, Tadmeka, Audagost, Walata, Odain, Ejil, Arewan, Tagaza, Gat, Tamentit, Tamdult, Sijilmasa, Gadamis, Warja, Kerwan, Tahert, Flimson, Injimi, Chinguete, Fez, and Marrakesh. The Trans Saharan trade route refers to the interconnected set of routes that link the African kingdoms and empires within the Sahara region. The Trans Saharan trade route allowed Africans to transport goods such as salt, gold, copper, books, iron, cola nuts, fruit, linen, cloth, ivory, hides, ostrich feathers, textiles, horses, glassware, weapons, sugar, cereals, including sorghum and millet, spices and beads, and cowrie shells. The water oasis dotted across the Sahara at the time provided resting and refueling places for the Malian traders. Africans in general utilized caravans of camels to transport their goods to different nations and empires. The camel was domesticated and used to transport goods between the trading cities due to their inherent ability to travel long distances and carry up to 300 kilograms of goods. They were often known as the ships of the desert. In addition, camels were able to provide milk, meat, and camel skins, which were used for leather. Cowrie shells were introduced from the East African coast as local currency and also cola nuts, but gold and salt remained the principal mediums of exchange for long-distance trade. These camel caravans ranged from 1 to 12,000 camels in total. For the Mali Empire, both their adoption of the religion of Islam and the spread of Islam across Western Africa and Northern Africa increased the expansion and solidification of the trade routes. Islam ensured the establishment of common values and rules upon which trade was conducted. Africans from various kingdoms and nations were more inclined to trust each other as they now shared a common belief system. As more African elites and royal families adopted the new religion, they in turn encouraged the local populations to do the same. In the Mali Empire, this was done to help strengthen the networks of trade and ultimately increase the wealth of the kingdoms and empires involved. The Mali Empire was amazingly successful in dominating a complex network of trade routes. A trade route from Takeda near the Tibesti Mountains in modern-day northern Chad, east to the city of Cairo in modern-day Egypt, was soon created. From the Hausa kingdoms of Western Africa in modern-day northern Nigeria, trade routes were established from their region to the capital city of the Canaan Empire called Njimi in modern-day Chad and Niger. In northern Africa, trade routes from Marrakesh in modern-day eastern Morocco to Fez in modern-day northern Morocco across to Kirouan in modern-day Tunisia ending in Libya were also created. Trade routes also expanded into the far east of Africa into the lands of Ethiopia. All these routes enriched the Mali Empire and the traders who used them and supported not only the trade of goods, 
but also the spread of literature and knowledge. Kola nuts were grown in the forests of Akon, modern-day Ghana, and thousands of tons of kola nuts were treated annually and also used in religious ceremonies such as marriages and name-giving ceremonies. Also, the Niger River became significant in facilitating trade via the use of riverboats. The Salt Trade Within the Mali Empire For the Mali Empire, the trade in salt was an extremely important commodity and source of wealth. The Tagaza region to the north of the empire continued to generate salt in abundance. Salt mines in Alil and Ejil to the west of the empire were also utilized. Salt was transported by both camel caravans and by boat along rivers such as the Senegal River and the Niger River. The cost of salt, once transported to the capital of Mali, was known to quadruple in price. Most commonly, salt was exchanged for gold and gold derivatives such as gold dust. In addition, salt was used to preserve meat and also added to food for taste. With regard to salt, the demand usually outstripped the supply, which kept prices at a premium, and in many cases it was exchanged directly for gold dust. In rural areas, salt could even be cut into small pieces and used as currency in some transactions. Large salt slabs were loaded onto camels, with each camel carrying two blocks, which weighed 200 pounds each. A 200-pound block of salt, transported by river from Timbuktu to Jemnay in the south, could double its value and be worth around 450 grams of gold. When camel caravans arrived at the trading city, the salt was sold or exchanged for other valuable goods such as ivory, animal skins, and gold. The Malian city of Tagaza was so abundant in salt mines that it was known to have structures with walls and roofs constructed purely from salt. The Gold Trade with the Mali Empire Gold mined in Bambuk and Bure as well as other sources enabled the Mali Empire to produce almost half the gold in Africa at the time. The currency or coinage of Mali was known as the Mithqual or Dinar and was equivalent to four and a half grams of gold. From 1235 AD, the great Mali Empire dominated the gold trade and controlled the trading centers of Timbuktu and Janay. The gold fields of Bure and Bambuk provided a key source of gold for the Mali Empire and allowed them to generate considerable wealth. The Mali Empire was so abundant in gold that it became world-renowned, evidenced by the fact that European Spanish maps represented the King of Mali holding large nuggets of West African gold. Mali by this time had become much more international in trade than their predecessors, the Ghana Empire. The trade in gold also saw the rise of other powerful empires, such as the Kanem Empire and the expansion of cities such as Kano, and the rise of powerful trading classes such as the Wengera. The Wengera merchants formed an important trade diaspora for the Mali Empire, stretching from the region of modern-day Gambia to the west of Borno in the east. They also had key connections all across the Mali Empire and some of the Akan states on the southern Atlantic coast. Eventually, by the 16th century, the use of the Trans-Saharan trade routes began to decline in usage in favor of other trade passages, but it is remembered as an excellent example of the effective spirit of coordination and cooperation which took place in Western eastern and northern Africa, which the Mali Empire benefited from.